If a one-out slug is good and buckshot is good, then combining them together must be even better. Today we're going to find out if this Reese's peanut butter cup of shotgun rounds is the answer to your defensive needs. I've got to admit, if I saw this box of menacing looking 12 gauge ammo on the shelf at the gun store, I would definitely take a second look at it. Heck, the box itself looks like the book cover of a Tom Clancy novel. And the shells inside couldn't be more sinister looking, all black with a black oxide base. These look like something the Grim Reaper himself would carry. Now let's pop the hood and see what makes this thing tick. Inside we have three copper plated double odd buckshot balls combined with a one ounce foster slug. The double odd buckshot is surrounded by a material called Grex, which is a buffer. And the purpose of a buffer is to prevent the various projectiles inside the shell from slamming into each other and deforming during the intense firing cycle. In other words, it kind of acts like packing peanuts. The combined weight of the buckshot and the slug is 1.35 ounces or 590 grains. Now that's a pretty hefty load, but the velocity is just barely over the speed of sound at sea level, 1150 feet per second. And by comparison, a normal velocity for a one ounce foster slug is anywhere between 1300 and around 1600 feet per second. Now let's get out there and see how these things perform. Welcome back, Top Flader folks. Jeff and Officer Greg out here with you today on the Sinaloa Cartel uh, Memorial Rifle Range. We have something that's a little different because it's not sent in by a viewer. Well, it was sent by a viewer, but it wasn't manufactured by a viewer. You've probably seen or heard about the Winchester PDX-1. It's a self-defense round, kind of marketed as a self-defense round, made by Winchester, commercially available. So uh, when you can find ammo, you can find these sitting on shelves. And as you can see in the picture there, it is a one ounce slug that also comes with three copper plated buckshot rounds. So we're gonna give it a try. It's a flashy packaging, it's embossed, it's got all kinds of goofy uh, illustrations on there. It's packaged in an all black round, so it looks super tactical. You could probably use it at midnight. But we're <laughs> gonna wait and see. We're gonna try and see, is, is it a gimmick? I, I remember watching videos on these a couple years ago. I don't really remember what the results were, but I don't know that many people who use them. So is it better just to have a slug or buckshot, or should we be pairing our slug with buckshot? We're gonna give it a try on a few different targets out here and let you know. We'd like to thank a viewer an anonymous viewer from Michigan who sent these in. Thanks, Chuck. His name is not Chuck. <laughs> we weren't supposed to say that. <laughs> I'm sure that, uh, yeah, now everyone's gonna know exactly who he is. There's only one Chuck in Michigan. <laughs> but he sent two boxes of these. This is 20 rounds, and these days, you know, that's not easy to find. I what's, know, thank you, man. <laughs> what's even funnier is that $14.99 for 10 rounds of this stuff, that tells you that he's had these for a little bit because you can't even find these anymore and if you did they'd be $50 a box. So the first thing we're going to do is fire them against these blank, uh, these are copyrighted OG cardboard targets. We're going to fire these PDX rounds against this so that we can get an idea of how it groups. Are they accurate? Is the slug accurate? If the slug is accurate, do the three uh, plated buckshot rounds fly off in goofy directions and, and endanger folks in the background? So we kind of want to know what these are going to do. We're going to try them at, what, 10 yards? 10, 10 yards, yards, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. All right, here we go at the heart. Whoa. Uh, Round number one, round number one that came with four projectiles is indicated by a green circle. Sound like Paul Farrell. <laughs> the, uh, the slug hit right here on the heart where we were aiming. And remember, we're at 10 yards. This is 30 feet away. This is about the farthest you would find in any house in America, down the hallway and across the living room, 10 yards roughly. We hit the slug right here in the heart. 
the three rounds, however, or the three buckshot rounds, one of them went over his shoulder. That would be kind of unacceptable out there. So we did notice a nice triangular pattern. Round number two, indicated by the little blue triangle, hit a little bit high. Could have been me. But you'll notice that the plated buckshot rounds kind of landed almost in the same neighborhood as each other. It's almost like they're flying in the same pattern each time. But round number two, all of the buckshot rounds stayed on him at 10 yards. That's a good sign. And then round number three has no color, but you can see round number three over here, and it's buckshot rounds in the same general area. Different pattern each time though. You can see although they're in the same neighborhood, they're in a different place each time. So especially these guys up here. No, the, the question I have is wouldn't just getting hit with that one ounce slug or do the job? <laughs> well, absolutely. Yeah, and anything that's, else is that's kind of what we're That's kind of what we're out to show today is that maybe you just put a one ounce slug in a dang shotgun and quit trying to gimmick it up with extra stuff, you know, slammed in there with your one ounce slug. Is there really any reason to have those three liability balls? We'll call these liability balls because they're not consistent enough to plan on each time, but we definitely know where our slugs are going. So for me, my choice, I'd stick with a standard slug if I was uh, working on this guy at 10 yards. So we're gonna try it now with a, uh, a standard old double lot buck mill spec round. You know it's good because it's OD green. Just because it's OD green, folks, does not mean that this thing kills any better or does anything <laughs> anything different. They just uh, they put it inside this hole for you, so you'd buy it. We're gonna try this standard old double lot buck military round uh, and see what kind of pattern it gets. Would it be better to use this at 10 yards than those PDX ones? You be the judge. <laughs> Okay, Paul. Double lot buck. Military though. Military buckshot, yeah. That's good. Okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Lighter recoil. Oh, really? Yeah. Quite okay. Good. Here we go. Yes, they all hit my guy. Actually, no, I'm sorry, one went over his shoulder. Please insert your comment here about that ninth round flyer because everybody saw the Paul Farrell video. <laughs> but, like Jeff pointed out, how do we know this one's the flyer and not this one or this one? Yeah, it, why, do, why should we care about that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't I care. think they ran out of idea. It looks like a bunny, look at that. Oh, look at that. <laughs> guy who sees a zebra in the clouds I too. do. So our standard military double lot buck did okay at 10 yards, but not great. I don't like that round. I would prefer something a little bit tighter, and I happen to use federal flight control in my shotguns. We're going to try a federal flight control round here at the uh, empty unmarked face and take a look and see what kind of... And, and I just want to remind everyone, this is a, a cylinder bore shotgun. In case yeah. you skipped over that part where, we, where I mentioned it before... <laughs> I'm sure they did. They yeah, tapped the I, second. That drives me crazy. They'll ask questions. Well, what what's the what load is it? How much do they weigh? It's like, did you not see the all of my specs I put up there? No, no, no. We have the attention span of a mosquito these days. I know. Because everybody's watching TikTok. So oh, God. everything's in six second chunks. So if this video is more than six seconds long, they gotta fast forward it. So yeah. Let's put a flight control right here in the face. Flight control ready. The flight control wad is very impressive. That's doing most of the work. We got some buffer in there, but the wad itself is so kind of revolutionary the way it works to keep the shot together at further distances. Well, this is why the Federal Flight Control is my choice for home defense and whatever else, anything 12 gauge related. We put all, well, we put eight visible rounds and of course our ninth pellet uh, Paul Farrell flyer is probably up here in the wad somewhere. But eight rounds here in a uh, in a buckshot sandwich. <laughs> Fed it to him right there. One round over here in the ear, but still, I mean, look at overall. That thing is uh, I don't know, quite a bit smaller. I, I than think I see end. the ninth one there. It's on the very. Oh, did you see it? I think I see it. Yeah. Either way, we oh, we got the eight eight pellets in here and one in there. Yeah. Probably about fifty percent of the size of this little bunny rabbit group down here. Yeah. 
So that's why we like the flight control. It does have a kick to it, so you can't do them all day long, but as far as group, that's what I want. Even at the middle of the circle there? Yes. Bazinga. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. At this range, we have a much tighter spread of the buckshot than at 10 yards. The PDX-1 definitely has a lot of knockdown power and it'll definitely stop the threat. It'll get the job done. And one can definitely make the case that it's better to have a round that's overkill a little bit than underkill. Well, we hit Doug right here in the bazongas. That's the slug and then one, two, three rounds. Look how much tighter the group is on those uh, plated buckshot balls at seven yards than they were at 10 yards. That's a, is that more acceptable to you? This is more acceptable, yes. Yeah. I'd say anything inside of 10 is okay, but yeah, I'd rather have but this. Then we gotta ask, what are those other buckshot doing? Yeah. I mean, that slug is gonna do the job. Right, exactly. The other ones are just yeah, if you not long for the ride. If you wanna take a look here, I mean, what's the point? If I've got this thing flying through my gooey bits, why do I even need these little guys trailing around out there? That's what, yep. That's what I mean, it, it looks cool and everything. The box looks cool. The, the idea seems cool. It's like a big old bully, and then he's got three little friends tagging <laughs> along behind him. <laughs> little I mean, toadies. Yeah, you really don't need those three little toadies. The big bully is going to do the job for you. So yeah. I prefer just to have that one projectile to worry about. It makes a lot more sense. Yeah. It's going to stop Ooh. whatever you're shooting at. Yep. Doug will stop dead in his tracks. Yep. Bazoongas. Ballistic gel head. <laughs> Just because. Here. Because people like it. Let's bring out the stupid stuff. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> Here we go. This is stupid stuff. Oh. This is stupid stuff. One important thing we can see in this shot is because the slug is at a relatively low velocity, it really doesn't have enough energy to expand. A higher velocity foster slug would have flattened out like a pancake going through this gel and dumped most of its energy. So, using the PDX-1, you'd have a higher probability of over-penetration, even though you're at a lower velocity, as odd as that sounds. This is a kit, evidently. It comes with water and lemons, but you gotta mix it yourself. <laughs> Let's give it a try. And see it's what it's stupid enough to be good. Yeah. That's a Louisiana lemon ballistic gel. Paul Harold, eat your heart out. Okay, fire! Whoo! Well, some targets have a practical, logical use. Others are just purely visual. And I'm not really sure where this one falls. Next target. Hey, we wanted to mention these uh, Blast Cloud by Ames Targets. Cool little cardboard cylinder full of magic uh, chalk dust of different colors because we're uh, we don't see color here on Top Later Mouse. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we're gonna try these out. They're kind of like I don't know. They're kind of like tannerite or something. They just blow up and make. They don't. They don't cool. blow up. They're just. They don't blow up, but I mean they. It's a visual target. They it's explode. they're kind of cool. They explode and look cool. You he wanted me like he sent it to me. He's like, don't don't talk about them for a couple of weeks because uh, I'm not ready yet. Oh, it's shit. like well. I thought you were ready. That's why you sent it to me. So you can use these on like gender reveals and stuff? I guess. What happens if it blows up and it's green though? Okay, take your time because people kind of judge you on YouTube, right? Oh really? I hadn't noticed. Yeah, okay, I'm ready. Here we go. Oh. Woo! It's kind of pink. Brianna's having a red baby. <laughs> Here we go. You may have seen these targets used by Jerry Michalek. Am I saying his name right? But the company that makes these is relatively new and they approached me and wanted to send some of these to us. I like small business and I like supporting small business. Be sure to check out the link in the description if you're interested in this new product. What's the story of the uh, stapler? That is a tactical paper clip dispenser. Oh, okay. No, that hasn't worked for years. I've been using it out at the 4-H range and Stopped working, so I'm tired of uh, it getting mixed in with the good ones. Okay, let's hit it. Ready? Good riddance. I'm ready. Here we go. Now we know which one's bad. I know. 
you probably lost a lot of sleep at night wondering what the best round is against a stapler. Or this may give you some idea of what this round can do if you needed to breach a door lock. I got Chinese bubbles here. It says made in USA. Oh yeah, well these are Harbor maybe, Freight bubbles. Maybe, maybe the Chinese ones is good. Harbor Freight bubbles. Well the Chinese ones are made out of actual chemicals. There we go. I'm gonna shoot this big old jug of bubbles, see if it makes bubbles. It says bubble blast solution, so it's just, oh, it's perfect. You saw that and it's like, hey, that's a good target. Let's see what it tastes like. Wow. That was a couple of bubbles. Yeah. Wow. That was a couple of bubbles. It'd be kind of boring if we just shot at paper targets for the entire video, so we try to keep things interesting. One thing this does show is how accurate the slug is, but also shows that the slug itself is doing most of the work, not the pellets. The pellets that are hitting really aren't doing that much damage by comparison. Okay, ballistic gel test, sort of barely. <laughs> okay, I'm ready when you are. Do they really want to know that? No. <laughs> Know that? No. <laughs> In this test, we're able to demonstrate just how much penetration or over penetration this round has, and that includes the buckshot. And again, this is due to its relatively low velocity, which doesn't allow expansion of either the pellets or the slug itself. Whether or not over penetration is an issue to you is something you have to decide for yourself. Okay, what happened, Greg? So I was aiming for up here, hit down here. Oh, you know what's kind of cool? That was good enough. What's cool? You know what's cool? kind of cool? If you can zoom in here, all that little white buffering that was in that shot shell is stuck here in the face of this. Oh, that's gonna be fun to get out of there to, oh, when I recast yeah. it. Yeah. The Grex, I think they call that. The Grex. Yeah. I think it's grape nuts. Yeah, it's and little little beads. The round busted through out here in the back of this chiseled off piece of clearish ballistic. That's where gel. the gummy bear was born from, though. He was born from there? Yeah. Oof. See, when a mama gummy bear and a daddy gummy bear, <laughs> we think it's this one here that hit him yeah, in the belly button. It, it kept on going, though. I don't know where the. the uh, any sign of the buck shot? No. I don't even know where those. They had to hit that. We were like super close. Yeah, but I mean. Is it in there? I don't see any. I mean, those pellet marks there, that, that could be the pellet sealing up around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiny little holes. Well, hopefully on the high speed, we'll be able to see something. You know, if only you had a uh, metal, detector? metal detector or a thermal camera, <laughs> you could go out there in that vast, vast wasteland and find these three, three yeah, projectiles, four that's projectiles. Right. We had like 12 hours to spend on this, huh? <laughs> God. Well, anyway, anyway. what are your final thoughts on these? Okay, so kind of a gimmick. I probably wouldn't use them out past 10 yards. We, we determined that. They're fun to shoot, but really is there any reason for your, your uh, one ounce slug to have three little friends trailing along that you don't really know where they're going to go? So if it was me, I'd stick with a one ounce slug or some decent uh, double out buckshot, not try and combine the two of them together. But if if you could find this, it's it's perfectly fine. Oh, it's it accurate. Works. Absolutely. We've determined You know what I'm saying? I don't want to, I'm not dogging on it. I don't want to no. dog on it. We like to thank unknown name Chuck from uh, Michigan for sending those through because ammo's not all that easy to find these days so that was pretty cool for yeah that was great that's fifty dollars worth of ammo at least by today's standards yeah so uh, yeah decent self-defense ammo it, it'll work it'll right. it'll do the job but you but, have other options too that so you, just because you can't get this doesn't mean you can't use buckshot or a right. slug or something if you're a new shotgun owner who just bought a shotgun because of the old pandemic or uh, whatever riots in the streets and you found this sitting on the store shelves, absolutely throw it in there and you would be well served. Yeah, yeah, so. it does the job and does it fine. It's The yep. slugs were accurate. Yep. Probably. But um, anything else? Oh, I was just gonna say, it's two items that work well individually, but when you put them together, it's- It doesn't work any better than no. the, no. the sum Again, of the two. As you mentioned, if that big one out slug is flying through your sternum, why would you even need these three little guys out here? You, mm -hmm. you don't need the extra damage, so that part is kind of a gimmick, but uh, they do look cool, so that's they do the important look cool. part. Yeah. Looking cool is the important part, as you guys can tell. <laughs> so, anyway, that's about it for us out here today. It's a little warm, so we're going to pack it up and head on in. Appreciate you guys stopping by. 
if you're interested in about how we made these cardboard targets over here I just yeah have a go video. check them out if you're subscribed to me and you watch these and you like greg go subscribe to him it's if free you, isn't it if you don't like greg and you wish you know i wish that guy would get off of there and bring back danny that's fine too go over and watch the video anyway yeah uh, <laughs> my newest video we're going to put up here in a little bit probably within hours of this one is going to be about how i made those uh, cardboard targets so yeah you have lots of neat stuff on there so yeah sometimes well so, yeah if you're super bored and maybe your netflix is down <laughs> and uh i don't know you're stuck in a cave somewhere you got nothing else to watch it's that or the view reruns oh maybe you give og's danger show a shot i don't know <laughs> so anyway thanks for stopping by we'll see you guys on the next video <laughs>